What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn about the Just Publisher in Combine. This will be a nice intro and basics primer for all of you that are getting your uh, feet wet with Combine. So what the heck is a Just Publisher? Well, the first thing I'll say is that it's a pretty bad name, but basically it's a mechanism in Combine to get a uh, response from a publisher just once, hence the name Just. So a good example is if you're making an API call and you just want to get the response one time once it's done, you'll use the Just Publisher. So we're on the dev documentation page here. I'm not going to bore you all and read it, but you can go ahead and read it if you so choose to. We're going to run through an API call to see a more realistic example. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by absolutely destroying that like button down below. It helps tremendously with every single video. Subscribe to the channel if you're into Swift and you're new here. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and give our project a name of Just Publisher. Make sure your language is set to Swift, your interface is Storyboard, and your lifecycle is UIKit. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like, and let's get into the Just Publisher. So the Just Publisher, like the name kind of uh, implies, allows you to get a uh, subscription published result just once. So you can imagine something like making an API call where you want the result to just come back once, hence the name Just. I think it's a horrible name, but then again, I'm not Apple, so my opinion is kind of irrelevant. But let's go ahead and do an example. So first things first, I went ahead and grabbed a URL, which is going to give us some random uh, list of users back in JSON. So I'll go ahead and declare a URL right there. And we are going to get into creating that just publisher by importing combine first and foremost at the top. We want to have a function which actually returns to us that publisher. So we're going to go ahead and create a any publisher. And upon the success case, we want to get an array of users back. And we never want to return an error, hence the never right here. Now let's go ahead and create that user model. It's going to be a very simple uh, model. It'll be codable. And it's going to have one property of name inside of it, just like that. Now let's actually get into the fancy part of creating a just publisher. So first and foremost, we want to unwrap our URL. So we'll say guard let URL is URL. And if we fail, we're going to return a just publisher with an empty array. And we're going to say erase this to be an any publisher since the response type here is any publisher, which is a, a genericized version of any publisher, hence the name. So the just is basically saying just a single time return this empty array because we want an array of users. If you know, if we come into this guard case, something went wrong. So we'll just go ahead and do that. This is where things get a little more interesting. Let's go ahead and create a data task publisher to actually make an API call. So we're going to say URL session dot shared and I'm going to say data task publisher and we want to go ahead and create that publisher with this respective URL that we're unwrapping up above. After we go ahead and create this, we want to go ahead and map the data that we get back. So we'll say $0.data. Then we want to try to decode the type of uh, model that we want. So it's going to be use an array of user, I should say, .self from a JSON decoder, just like that. Then if any error occurs, we want to catch that error. So in our case, we're returning an empty array via the just publisher. So I'm going to say underscore in since I don't really care about the error. But we are going to say basically return a just publisher with a empty array. And then finally, we want to erase this to an any publisher like we did in the guard statement here. And then we can go ahead and toss a return here if you want to be cleaner. You can assign this whole thing to a publisher and then down here you can say return publisher. So we, we're doing a whole lot in these like 10 lines of code. So let's let's talk through it once more before we hook it up to a call site. So we're first creating our URL pretty simple. If we're not able to in the guard, we'll return a just publisher with an empty array and then we're erasing it to an any publisher just so it uh, actually matches the return signature here. Then we are creating this data task publisher 
we're getting the data out of it with a map, we're decoding it, we're catching an error on it, and then finally we're once again erasing it to a, any publisher and then returning that publisher. So let's see what the call site of this actually looks like. Let me go ahead and move this URL to the top of our class here. And just like any publisher, we need an observer to hang on to a reference of it. So I'm gonna create a any cancelable up here and basically at the bottom of view to load I can go ahead and say fetch users and just like any combined publisher we can go ahead and say add a sync on it and we're gonna get a received value and this received value you can actually see will be an array of users which is highlighted right here the way it basically knows that is because our generic signature of this fetch users function already tells us we're getting an array of user objects back. So from that, we can go ahead and just grab these users and assign them to an array, presumably on this controller. So we'll say users is going to be an array of user objects, just like that. Now we want to make sure we don't cause a uh, memory leak so we can go ahead and say weak self right there so let's make this a little more interesting and more realistic let's go ahead and add a table view where we will list out the names of the users that we are fetching so I'm gonna create a pretty basic UI table view here. Nothing too fancy going on, assuming my autocomplete decides to work and cooperate today. So we'll say UI table view just like that. I'm not gonna do any particular custom cells or anything too fancy today since we're focusing on combine and the just publisher, but just so you guys can get an idea of, you know, how to actually update your UI, I think it's pretty useful. I'll also actually show you how to uh, tell the publisher which thread to give you the response on so you don't have to dispatch to main. So there is our uh, table view. We wanna go ahead and make sure we add it as a sub view as well as assign its data source and presumably its frame as well. And then we just wanna to conform to the UI table view data source. And I'll toss the table view functions down here. So number of rows is going to just be users.count and sell for row at index path. We'll go ahead and basically DQ a pretty vanilla table view cell and just assign its uh, text label to the user's name. So what is the ID? It's going to be cell since that's what we use to register up above. I'll go ahead and return the cell like that. And in between here, we'll say the cell's text label text is the nth element from our uh, users array dot name just like that. So after we get the actual users back in th this sync right here, we want to go ahead and say, hey, table view, go update yourself. So we can say self dot table view dot reload data. However, this is called on a background thread, so it might not play nicely. Actually, it will not play nicely. So what we can actually say is receive on, I believe we can do it. Let's see, let's see. We want to go ahead and say receive this on dispatch queue dot main. So we're going to say for this fetch users, which returns a any publisher, we want to receive the subscription on the main thread once the publisher goes and gets the data and this sync will be called on the main thread so you don't have to wrap this in a dispatch queue main async any of that nonsense so let's go ahead and give this a run in a simulator and hopefully we should see a nice list of uh, names so go ahead and pick a simulator of your choice give it a build, hopefully we don't have any errors, everybody hold your breath, and we should see our app launch here momentarily, there it goes, and we should see a list of names. So, let's give it a few seconds, because my simulator loves to be slow whenever I'm doing a video, apparently. But the cool thing about this, ah, there it goes. So cool, here is a list of a bunch of names. The cool thing about this whole concept of using the Just Publisher is that it's super simple, and it makes writing your API calls like extremely trivial. So I don't know about you guys, but using using this versus a completion handler, um, it's a little bit more complicated when you learn about it, but it's less code. This is probably the most compact uh, API call that I've personally written. I mean, we broke everything into multiple lines, but realistically, you can do this whole API call in like four lines, which is pretty amazing. So 
This is a quick intro to Just Publisher in Combine. Once again, terrible name. Everyone go yell at Apple for me. But that's all I've got for you guys. So if you haven't smashed the like button down below, don't forget to do so. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you're into Swift, iOS, uh, Swift UI, various Apple platform software related videos. I like to post daily on this channel. Leave a comment down below. Are you guys using Combine? What do you think of Combine? Is it too new? Um, give me any feedback. What do you guys want to see on the channel? I like making stuff that's actually valuable to all of you versus what I want to do. So uh, do let me know. That said, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.